On today's show, Tim McDonald, a passionate spearer from Australia, displays some of his amazing skills and incredible footage, as well as shares with us his once in a lifetime shot on that one fish. Yippee! That's a monster! <laughs> this show has been brought to you by Spearfishing Down Under Magazine. Passion, adventure, respect. SpearoDVD.com Buy the best spearfishing DVDs online. Tim is a man set apart and wholehearted for God as a pastor in his local church. He's also passionate about spearfishing. He's been hunting out in the blue now for many years and loves to venture out in hot pursuit of clear water and hard to find secret dive locations, as well as challenging reef fish to hunt. Tim finds himself hunting a large variety of species found scattered up and down the Australian coastline. Oh, there's a big one! There's a big one! I'm on, but there's a bigger one under it! Some of which being the very sought after dewfish, also known as mulloway. These fish can be found in shoals and make for some exciting spearfishing. He also loves the common Spanish mackerel purely for their incredible power one shot and great eating qualities. But Tim's real passion lies in stalking hard to find and hard to hunt reef fish. Fish that test his breath hold ability and hunting skills to the absolute max. That being said, this episode Tim shares with us a spearfishing experience of a lifetime. Hey, uh, Reader's SDM. Really, really lucky just recently to have the opportunity to shoot a large marlin in my local waters. Fish ended up weighing around 138 kilos, just around that 300 pound mark. Uh, it was a great privilege to be able to spend time in the water with that fish and then also be able to take it. Uh, for me, such an honor. A fish like that, for myself, is a fish that if I'm gonna shoot it, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna take it home, I'm gonna eat it. Got in, I've been in the water for maybe 30, 40 seconds when uh, the school surgeons I was swimming above all of a sudden just scattered a million miles an hour. I heard a massive crack on the bottom and I looked down and a shark was coming at me 100 miles an hour. I flicked on my camera thinking, well, oh, this mate could make some great footage. And by the time I got my camera sorted, looked back down, there was three and they were on top of me. One came so close in front of me, I had to push away at it. Another one came in around behind uh, the back of me and they started just circling uh, from thinking this is going to make great footage to wow, I might need to call out to the boat. All of a sudden, one of them came right in behind me and I spun around, gave him a quick jab and he was looking like he wanted to grab me on the fins and as I spun around to have a look at him, I looked past him for a second and this is when I saw the marlin. The marlin had turned and started headed off and I could see it off in the distance so I remembered something someone told me years ago. Big marlin don't like being intimidated so swim at them really hard and you'll, you'll get them to come back at you. Now I swam it as hard as I could and it worked. Uh, it happened so quick that fortunately I didn't really have time to think about that. All I had time was I need to do a one fish stone. Remembering the DVD of one fish and, and that big marlin that was stoned, I pulled the trigger. Unfortunately no stone shot and then I realised it's time to call for the boat because this fish is going to take off. It lifted its spines, dropped its pecs and headed for New Zealand. Screamed out to the boat and uh, Oi! stuck Oi! my belt reel on really, really quickly and we're off. Once I had about 10 metres left on my line, I locked it off, held on and it dragged me for the next 10 minutes, which to be honest was really exciting. You know, it was probably the hardest part of the, of the whole experience. I also remembered during that tow that that morning I'd shot a, a jewfish and three sharks had eaten it. They dragged me through the water, they'd scuffed up my line, bent my spear, so I was also worried about my line breaking.
after another 10 minutes the fish started to really tire and Josh had a dive noticed the fish was looking pretty tired handed me his gun and uh, I dropped down and took the second shot only an inch above my first but at that turned the fish's uh, lights out and um, and stoned it and it changed colors the most vibrant beautiful blues and uh, dragged it up and had the fish in my hands really really quickly A few high fives going around and then the big question of how do I get this fish into the boat. I have a 16 foot Hanes. Fortunately again I had Rick Bature with me and his naval skills tied a knot. We dragged it in, boys up on the nose and it came in the back of the boat quite easily. From there decided it was time to head home after some pretty good high fives shot in and uh, processed the fish from there. When we got home that afternoon uh, we weighed that fish at the local Redcliffe Co-op and bought four boxes of ice. Got it home, I had it iced. When I got it home, we filleted it. And I shared that, that uh, fillet with around 20 or 30 families uh, here locally, my friends and my neighbours, and also a whole bunch of people at church as well. Uh, that fish tasted fantastic, and uh, many families were really happy eating that fish. <laughs>